It's in beautiful Las Vegas. It's another day in paradise. Happy Wednesday. Let's make it a winning Wednesday. Lots of things going on. We have stats. We have 109 days of inventory. Yay, yay, yay. We love that. And that's based on daily sales of 88, which was the average for July. So we're using that number and we'll see what happens this so far this month, we're doing 82 sales a day, but that will go up because today's the last day of the month and hopefully we have lots of closings. We closed about 68 homes yesterday. We listed 117 and let's see, let me just do a sound check real quick. Make sure everybody can hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Let me just do a sound check. Okay. Real quick. I'm not using my uh, regular speakers because they got the, the other day they worked and then they didn't work and they worked and they didn't work. So <sighs> I know I told you, I think I need a new computer <laughs> anyway. So uh, we listed 117 homes yesterday and of those 117, 35 of them were 470,000 and under. And that means that's 40% of our active homes are um, 40,000, 47, 470,000 and under for a total of 3,009. So there's 3,009 homes. That's 40% of the nine of the 7,483 single family homes. So that's good. That means that we've got a variety to pick from. So yes, it's, it's slowed down a little bit, but we're praying it picks up. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine, Kitty, and uh, she said, wow, you know, she's just hoping that uh, things pick up. Uh, she was at a class and they were talking about short sales and yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I think we've, we've looked at the, um, you know, people that bought a home, uh, the end of, or last year, the high price, uh, medium was 365. So right now, you know, we were, I showed the other day, we were at 451,000 for the medium price, but I think it's going to go up. I think it's actually going up for, we'll see tomorrow what it ended up for this month, but I think it's going to be more than 450. So, you know, we'll see. the market is a changing. That's for sure. We know that. And we have to change with it. And we know that too. And um, we are still selling those million dollar homes five a day. Um, it hasn't really changed that much. So it's increased from last year. So it's still hanging in there. People still coming and purchasing those million dollar homes. I've noticed the, uh, in, in my community, the million dollar homes have, uh, there's not as many listed. At one time we had oh, over 40, now we have under 30. So things, again, things, things change. And you know, things change with the seasons anyway. So um, in this business, if you're new to it, uh, it's kind of like strap yourself in because it's going to do this. It's going to come, come and go. And I was telling Kitty this morning, I was saying, you know, Kitty, she farms. She took Buffini last year. She farms. She does what she's supposed to do. And she's fine because if you can, and you just keep doing it because it doesn't happen overnight and you just be consistent. And that's what people like. So anyway, um, that's the stat part of our show today. I want to talk a little bit about this particular chart, whoops, wrong one. Oops, whoops, whoops, here we go, this one. Talk about this. So, you know, a recession, you know, a recession historically affects the housing market. Yes, it does. And this, is this a potential recession or when we recession? Depends on, I guess, who you listen to, what they think, but let's say it's a recession. Well, here's what history tells us that home prices actually appreciate only, and they only fell, um, they only fell during the early 90s and the housing crash in 2008 when there was a recession. So for the most part, historically, you know, prices appreciate, um, except those early 90s when we had that uh, recession and the housing crash in 2008. You can see that here on the chart. What happened in 1990 was um, there the um, there was the uh, wasn't a war, but there was a big dispute uh, in Kuwait, and things kind of dried up a little while because nobody knew what was going to happen. And uh, John and I were ingrained in commercial at the time and commercial real estate, and and that dried up quickly, and we had to go back to the basics. 
which we did and we recovered and you know we uh, back then you had floor time and so we always sat floor and wrote our we, we were always writing notes and and sending things information out to people so we were farming back then anyway um so mortgage rates let's talk about mortgage rates so you know the prices prices will fall you know sometimes but normally not um so we'll see they've fallen a little bit but compared to last year again the end of the year was 365 and then we shot up in the 400s but we'll see how the year ends up and compare the year over year because at the end <laughs> that's what really matters right and uh, mortgage rate they declined during each of the previous recessions so now ours were low and then they went back up to fight inflation um, and I haven't done the background check to see how bad inflation was during these times of previous recessions, but, but they do go down normally. So we'll see, we'll see right now they're up, but they're not up that badly. I mean, five and a half percent, I think was something I looked up the other day for someone with a uh, credit score of up to 620. I think that's what I, I saw. Let's see. I might have that chart here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, no, I didn't uh, print it. So not to worry. I mean, the sky's not falling. Uh, business is down. I know that the title companies are probably saying, oh my gosh. And, you know, years ago, we didn't have so many title companies. Now we have so many title companies that, of course, a dip in this market is going to affect them greatly. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I hear them kind of uh, crying a little bit about that. And you have to understand the difference between what median price means um, also uh, in, this, uh, in, in these times. Because median price is what the, the uh, market hears. They hear what the median price is, not so much what the average price is. And the median sales price is the very middle of the data. So that's exactly half of the houses price for uh, less and half price for higher. So that's the median. And then average is when you take all the houses and add them together and divide them by the number of houses. And that's the average. And so as we know that there's, um, what did we say today? How many million dollar homes? Uh, let's look at that chart again and see if we can see the differences here. So the million dollar homes we've sold 1192 this year this year okay so when when you look at average you know there there's not that many uh, of those um and that's uh we we sell many many more homes uh in the mid-range and that's just you know so things get altered a little bit when you talk about average so you have to be careful when you're talking to you know your clients and and depending on the price range that you're in Anyway, so that's that for today. Um, in the stat area and uh, looking at our market, the recession, what it does to interest rates and prices, we'll see. We'll see. We're really early in the game yet to have any predictions and crystal ball predictions, as I call them. Um, yeah. So one of the things, you know, I, I listen to, um, you know, Tom Ferry and Brian Matheny, and I've even started listening to Tony Robbins sometimes because he's, he's, uh, He's got some really good stuff too. But anyway, um, I think Tom Ferry was interviewing uh, Dr. Amen. And Dr. Amen is all about happiness and how happiness is something that should be, uh, you should live with some value uh, and goals and uh, to be healthy and happy. And uh, I learned that a long, long time ago. So you'll hear me saying that many, many times. And of course, my dog's name is Be Happy. I really believe in happiness. And, <clears throat> you know, when you're happy, um, you know, and you, you need to start noticing, you know, what you like about other people and tell them and tell them, focus, focus on happiness and say, you know, if they look good, tell them they look good. If you just did a bad transaction with them a week ago, forget about it. Just focus on the good things and be happy. Being happy is not just saying that you're happy. One of the things that Dr. Amen says is at night, uh, he, he, he says a little prayer and his prayer includes, you know, what went well today? Thank you, God. What went, this went well today. 
and he sweeps out all the bad things and and he finds he finds the the awesome things that happen during the day so when you just quantify the good things some things are are really good some things are just good but just focus on those and he says you know your dreams will be better your sleep will be better you'll wake up better and eventually you'll start waking up happy because you went to bed thinking of the good things. And I thought that was really, really good advice. And um, you have to take care of yourself, he said. Uh, he's like very negative about sugar. He thinks that sugar, you know, tends to destroy your brain and your memory. And when you can't remember things or whatever, you tend to get discouraged. And so that lends itself to perhaps not being happy. So a lot of the foods that you eat and the, the, what you drink, the supplements that you take, those all factor into your brain health. And if your brain is healthy and you remember things and you have energy, it's a lot easier to be happy, so he says. And he wrote a book and it's about seven, the, you know, seven ways to be happy. And I think I'm going to, I ordered it actually, because I thought that, wow, this book is really could really be good because he, I like it when there's a number associated with what you're reading, because then you can take things in segments. That's how my brain functions and works and how I learn is in segments. And so when I can segment things, I learn better, faster, easier, and remember more. And so I like that about uh, the way he wrote the book. And you know, it's like um, <laughs> uh, Steve Covey, right? The seven habits. And breaks it into each habit. So you have a segmented way of learning and remembering. So I think that's good. What's going on here? We are having a property management class tomorrow from 10 to one. And it's a new class that Jimmy just, I think this is the second time presenting it in our training center. I think he did present it to the board uh, in, uh, in their CE uh, classes, but it's three CE credits. And it's all about property management and it's talking to other, he did videos of other property managers and they're telling, you know, uh, some stories and they're veterans in the business. And it's, um, it's interesting because again, he's, he's got, I don't know, uh, mostly videos in this class. So I was surprised the board approved it, but happy that they did because that gives a gateway to our future of being able to show more videos in our CE classes, which people learn from videos. Sometimes you just see things plastered, which I'm going to show you some slides today. Um, and without the video, though, it's not as impactful. And then we started having, of course, Buffini last week. 100 Days to Greatness started. And there's 14 weeks where we get together from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock every Friday. And we learn how to plant the seeds in your business, how to nurture those seeds how to cultivate, how to grow. And then, and then finally, when things start to harvest, how you, he has a listing presentation. He shows you his listing presentation as he's doing it to a client. He shows you an open house, how he's doing it for a client. And he uh, has different scripts in there, scripts in there, which we all love scripts or we should love scripts because it gives us confidence that, Hey, this worked for these people. Maybe it'll work for me. And one thing that he says that I think is very impactful that you should listen about, the average real estate agent in the United States makes thirty-five to 36000 a year before taxes. When, the Buffini, when you take the Buffini courses and you become a member of his um, uh, tribe, so to speak, um, and you don't have to spend money to be a member, you know, of his tribe. But anyway, he has a, he has a great way of doing his CRM. And you can do it with any CRM, not just his, but it's classifying people into groups and into sources like we do with Agent Formula and our CRM. We modeled it after the simple version of his version um, because simple is makes it a lot easier to maneuver and to use. Anyway, so he, he teaches you from the ground up. So People that have been in business five, 10 years take the class as well as new agents take the class. And I sometimes think that um, it impacts people who have been in the business a couple of years because perhaps they didn't get a farm, perhaps they didn't know how to nurture their database. 
whether it's filled with buyers or sellers. You have to learn how to nurture it, how to communicate with people and how to be consistent. And he teaches you all that. So anyway, Jimmy and I are so happy to, we do it once a year and we started it um, a little early this year because we want everybody to get prepared for 2023. Now, if you've missed the first one, come, come uh, Friday uh, to 8400 West Sahara, 100 Days to Greatness, Brian Buffini. Um, the first one, you can go back and catch up on the first one. The second one, you probably should should take it now. I know it's a holiday weekend. So if for whatever reason you can't come to the third one, but then you have to catch up. And we continue to talk about, you know, nurturing your business. So you really don't miss um, too much. But we want you to watch the videos and do the homework. So I think by the third, if you're not, if you can't make it by the third class, I don't think, I think it'd be too much for you to catch up on. So um, take it this, come this Friday or come next Friday, and you can probably jump in uh, in, in the class three at the latest. Before the class, I've started doing a social media mastermind group, which I used to do years ago. And uh, some of the, um, it's, it's, the results were amazing. And we, uh, in fact, there's a couple people that took it that came back. Yeah, that was that was quite a compliment. Um, John Mattis was one of them. And um, we we exchange ideas, exchanging ideas. We, we bring our questions. You bring your questions like, well, how do I do this? Well, if I do this, what's going to happen? And and so and and uh, we have quite a great group, uh, but we have more seats available. So if you're thinking about integrating social media into your marketing, not just doing social media for social reasons, but to integrate it into your marketing, you might want to just jump in. You can jump in and jump out. It's free. You can, if you miss one, it's okay because we continually, it's always uh, new material and, and it's good. And we talk about, it's funny how we continue to talk about things we talked about two weeks ago. We talk about next week. And so you're not really going to miss uh, if you missed the first one, just jump in. We had people that I think we ran our social media for two or three years and people came in, people came in, they left, people went, um, uh, people, some people didn't like it. They didn't like to in integrate social media marketing into their repertoire of marketing. So it's, but it gives you an idea and it gives you lots of different ideas. And we, we share what other people were doing that are successful, how they do it. You know, like the hyperlapse uh, reels and, and I throw those words out there because you probably are intrigued by that and you might want to learn how to do that. And we, t we, we, we talk about what you do. Occasionally, we tell you, we show you how to do things. We don't get too wrapped up in that because um, it becomes too intense. So we're talking about what to do and how it works and what to, how to learn what to do. That's important. And we do that. Anyway, that's what's happening uh, in our uh, business. What I want to do today is I want to segue a little bit to why is it that some people succeed when others don't? Well, what ensures success and what hinders it? Of course, consistency. But success has specific ingredients. And if you know what they are, um, then you have your goals and you live the good life and the good life should be what you're, you know, what you're striving to do is living a good life. And, uh, there's a little cocktail, uh, for success. Here's a couple things, just a couple things, just some things to think about. Nothing overwhelming today, just a few little tidbits here. And number one is humility. Now, Gary Vee talks a lot about humility in his book, 12 and a half because he really believes in humility and empathy and kindness. And so the first ingredient for success is humility. And there isn't always, and that's not always easy. You know, humble pie is uh, the pastry that's never tasty, right? Um, things go wrong. Uh, you have a decision to make. You can either get bitter or you can get better. And John and I had a very disappointing experience this week. I'll just share it with you quickly. We've been working with some older people for about four years and we knew that, and, and the woman got into an accident two years ago and it took her a long time to recover, but they did, they kept saying, oh, don't worry, we're going to list with you. Right, right, right. Well, we did have the house listed for a short period of time, but then, um, 
it ran into the holidays and so they wanted to take it off the market temporarily so we said okay and then they went away and uh because again they're not really that healthy the gentleman in particular so so they said we're coming back in september and we'll definitely this the house put the house back on the market because we want to be out of there by thanksgiving so what we did is we you know reached out to some people who um because we're working in that particular uh, area and marketplace. And somebody said, oh, I, it's coming back on the market. Great. I'm. I, let me give you an offer. So anyway, we uh, gave them an offer only to find out that the gentleman um, has to have, give his son power of attorney. And guess what? The son has another agent. So we don't get the listing. But it's all good, you know, in the end. I mean, we were we 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 didn't get bitter, of course, because the people had health issues and things happened to people. And it it, it just it just happened. So hopefully they'll sell the house. I'm sure they will. It's a beautiful home. And the agent, we've known that agent that uh, is a friend of the uh, son uh, for a long time. So things happen. Things go wrong. And we had a decision to make. I mean, we were bummed at first, right? John's like, oh my gosh, of all the people in the world, I, I thought that for sure they wouldn't, this would not happen, but it did. And I think that, you know, we were bummed for a while. And then we um, ate dinner, watched a funny movie. We watched Steve Martin and John, John or Jack Black in uh, uh, the best year where they're looking to beat, uh, um, beat the the uh, number one bird uh watcher and it's a funny movie anyway i don't want to digress too much so getting back here to humility so we become who we are because of the adversities and the struggles we face and that was that was quite a struggle i have to tell you but humility is the foundation of all growth and um you know when you get turned upside down it's not time to panic it's time to grow it's time to grow and um, we can do that. Um, the next thing is curiosity. So if you want to succeed, you have to be curious. Come to our social media class. Come to our Buffini class. Be curious. But be curious about other people, too. Get folks talking about themselves. And you'll learn an enormous amount. Jimmy Digg always says, guess who's in control of the conversation? The person asking the questions. And then the next thing is how good are your questions? And there's another um, speaker who says, you know, it's one thing to be interesting, but it's better to be interested. It's better to be interested in people and be curious um, about them. And next, then be curious about your own life. So why do you do the things that you do? You know, you um, it's, uh, you know, are you are these your patterns, your habits, your routines Do they contribute to or deplete your chances of success. So why do you do the things that you do? Why? What are your patterns? What are your habits? What are your routines? And do those all contribute or deplete to the, the chances of success? And everybody has different patterns, different things they do every day, but are some of the things that you do um, not taking you where you need to go? And that's for you to decide. And remember, a 1% change over the course of a year is a 38% improvement in performance. Now, I didn't do that math. Um, Brian Buffini did, actually. A 1% change over the course of a year is a 38 improvement in performance. So when COVID was over, uh, I mean, when the, some things started opening up, COVID's not over, obviously. But anyway, when some things started opening up, uh, the fitness center here where I live was one of them. And so I started going back because... Working out on in the house by myself was hard for me. I don't have a treadmill. I'd get outside and I would walk outside, but then when I come back into my home, I didn't use my weights and things. So uh, as soon as the fitness center opened, I, I'm there every day, uh, five, six days a week. And it make, it's, it's helpful for me to make that change. So hopefully, you know, in one year, that's a 38 um, improvement in my performance, my physical performance, my energy levels. 
And so when you make small incremental changes in your patterns, you know, you'll improve your health, your finances, your communication, your relationships, your business and your work and your life just by making small changes. We used to stop at Starbucks almost religiously. And then I'm looking at my, my bill because I have the app and it gets charged on my credit card. And I'm looking, I'm like, that's too much for coffee. <laughs> Why am I paying so much for coffee when, you know, John makes the best coffee in the world right here at home. I'll just get a Yeti and carry it to work and save some money. And I mean, I can save a hundred to two hundred dollars a month by not having coffee every day at Starbucks. Small change, but at the end of the year, that's two thousand dollars. I can do a lot with two thousand dollars. Yeah, two thousand dollars. Think about it. Yeah, I know it creeps up on you, doesn't it? And then these days of inflation, I don't need to spend that anyway. Um, and communication. So what we started doing um, in uh, well, you know that we do our uh, items of value. We do that. And we send a postcard out to all of our property owners in our property management business. And we've been doing that for years. They get a keep them card every month. And then we started doing personal notes. So little changes over time. Okay. And so we went from postcards and items of value, which we're still doing to also doing personal notes now once a quarter. So that's not overwhelming. And just catching up on people. Now the holidays are coming, so it's really easy. I like to do a personal note in November because it's Thanksgiving and the first week of November, you tell them how grateful you are for them and the relationship that you have with them. And hopefully they have great holidays and whatever. And then of course you always send them a Christmas card. So communication and that helps building your relationships. You know, they, it's all about know, like, and trust you. And if you're not in touch with people, you know, what, what did, and I don't remember who said it, uh, People don't know how much, people don't care how much, people don't, you don't, no, I always mess it up. Anyway, people don't care until, people don't matter, I can't remember. Somebody help me out there. Anyway, I remember it. Um, it what, but basically it says that, you know, they don't, they don't really care about you until they know you care about them. That's the bottom line. And so you need to let people know that you care. And personal notes are a great way to do that. And then improving your business. Again, get a farm, get a farm. Come on, everybody, get a farm. You need one more than ever. And it's not too late. If you start now, by the first quarter of the year, you'll start getting some fruits from your labors of your farm. You know, the farmer's going to start harvesting um, in the first quarter if you start now. Work and life, there's got to be a balance, always a balance. And if you do, you know... I think that sometimes we have to realize that maybe, maybe we've put that we're reaching for too many stars. You know, maybe our expectations are too big. Um, and I, and I'm not a negative person, believe me, but I think that sometimes when you, when you don't accomplish the things that you want to accomplish, you kind of think, Oh, it didn't work. And I, and I'm not about being negative. I'm about being positive. So you need to put again, little changes, a little change over the course of a year makes a big difference. So make little changes, you know, you can't, you can't go in the ring in the first round and knock them out usually, right? That's, that doesn't happen. So little changes over time to balance your work and your life. And if you do the right things like, uh, Glenda Baker and so many, um, so many of the the greats out there across the country. They take a Sunday and they do videos and they get them all done. And then the rest of the month, now they can just repurpose them out there, or they get a videographer because they realize I don't need to be writing a, a counter offer on Labor Day. Let my virtual assistant do that, right? Uh, so little changes that you have to think about to make your work and your and and your life balanced. And lastly, you need to stay curious, of course, about your profession and keep learning, hone your skills and become a master of your craft. And that's one of the things that we really believe in, uh, Kane and Jimmy and I. I mean, we just want to help you as much as we can and improve your skill set, hone your skill set, give you the skills and that you can start improving on and utilizing in your in your business. Um, then we have 
the ability to receive help. The third ingredient in success is the ability to receive help. And the most common reason we're not open to accepting help is our pride and our ego gets in the way, doesn't it? And then, then there's ignorance. We think we already know all we need to, and there's nothing else to learn. That's not good. And, and I, you know, in, in being a broker for all these years since night, since the 19 late eighties, I have seen so many people rise and fall fast because of ego and because they didn't want to listen. People would come and say, Ruth, you know, how do I do this? And I would give them the roadmap. I'd give them the recipe. And then I would see them go ask somebody else and they'd ask somebody else and they'd ask somebody else until they really didn't really. You have to find one mentor, one person that you want, that you believe in and that you will go to to help you with your business plan for 2023, for instance. Um, come comment and, and listen to Brian Buffini. He gets into, in the 100 Days of Greatness, we get into business planning and things like that. And come and, and uh, put, put your pride aside and, and learn new things and then employ them in your business. Uh, and don't ever think there's nothing else to learn. I know that Grant Cardone says, when you stop learning, you might as well put up the sign, I'm retired because you can't stop learning. You just can't. You can't. I mean, I'm 75 and alive. And a lot of that is because I never stop learning. I'm constantly learning new things. And, and I want to do that because I want to share them with you. So I have motivation. I'm not just learning to keep my brain alive. I'm learning so that I can assimilate it and learn what I know and put it in in a format for you so that you can learn. And Jimmy's the same way. And Kane now is jumping on that bandwagon with us. So we need to receive help and not be afraid to admit that I'm taking 100 days to greatness. No, I'm not new, but you know, I think I need to be recharged. So, um, and then the last is do it myself thinking. We mistakenly believe we need help and we, we don't need help and we can go it alone. Well, the fact is when you have no accountability and you operate alone, you generally end up staying where you are. The world changes around you, but you don't because you have nobody to be accountable to. And so sometimes it, maybe you're accountable to yourself because you're a type of person who can, here's my goals. Did I make my 20 calls today? Did I send out my, if you have a system that you're doing, then you are accountable. You're accountable to your system. But a lot of people, they just, they operate alone and, and whatever they're reactive people. I always say that one of the biggest challenges in this business, especially for salespeople, because we tend to be reactive is to be proactive if you learn that's that is hard to change i will tell you it's hard to change from a reactive person to a proactive person so if you can't be proactive hire somebody that can be for you it's not the end of the world i mean my you know god bless my husband but he's a very react he's a great salesperson but he does things tomorrow and i do things you know yesterday that's just, and that's what makes us a good team because I'm the proactive person. He's the reactive person. So if you don't have, if you're the reactive person and you don't, you know, sometimes you don't want to change your personality. You don't want to change the way you do things because you have some level of success, but you need a little help to grow your business, to become scalable. Because at the end of the day, eventually you might want to sell that business. Well, if you don't have somebody helping you being proactive and keeping your database updated and keeping your mailings going out and, and somebody to help you with the offers because, you know, you want to go home and, and be with your family and you hire a virtual person to help you on that level or a live person it doesn't have to be virtual, but that seems to be the trend right now. Anyway, um, the world is changing around us and we have to change. We have to change and we have to adapt. Um, teams are big and if you are if you are a loaner agent or just a small team, the big teams, you know, they can afford transaction coordinators, listing uh, coordinators, uh, people to do their marketing uh, like Aaron Taylor. He's got a whole team. He's got a whole team. You know, there's those three legs to the business, the financial, the customer service 
and of course the marketing and he's got that team down pat. Yeah. And so he can scale. So you can scale, you can start small and get a virtual assistant or like I said, a live assistant and but grow and, and plan to grow plan to realize what if you if you're going to spend that money, what do you plan on accomplishing by having that person? And it doesn't happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. And so anyway, um, just a few words of wisdom for today. I got this from a blog I read uh, that Brian Matheny did um, or his staff did for him. And I just thought it, it was pretty cool. You know, so we went over several things. We went over um, uh, in today's world, if you're drinking the cocktail of failure every day, the great news is that hope exists for all of us. And it doesn't matter how old we are, where we are in our life. I mean, I'm older, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm still drinking that cocktail for success. And you can turn things around and prevail at any age, and it's a good life. So that's the, this is like the cocktail for success versus the cocktail for failure. Anyway, a um, few things that we've talked about, and um, they're important. They're important. And humility, we talked about humility, curiosity. We talked about um, the ability to receive help, which is being accountable and um, maybe getting somebody to help you. That should, maybe that should be your goal for next year is to get all your ducks in a row now and then it, and then maybe in December start searching for a virtual or a live person to come and help you part-time full-time whatever you need I think the virtual thing became such a good trend during pandemic especially is because we didn't need somebody full-time and and they had the ability to work on many for many different people so anyway you have a wonderful day I've gone on for probably way too long today um uh Friday will be a shorter day because we have our um uh, social media group that starts at 9 30 so i might start earlier on friday uh, we'll see how that plays out again life is ever changing i love you all go to be.vegas sign up for the property management class tomorrow it's good for general it's good for and of course property management if you are a manager you need it